Welcome to Still Growing in Grace, a program dedicated to inspiring joy, giving hope, and delighting in grace. I'm Mike Zenker, and I'll be sharing with you a message of hope that will expand your understanding of God's love and amazing grace. God already deeply loves you, totally accepts you, and really, really likes you. Growing in Grace Ministries Canada and Hope Fellowship, your community church, invite you to enjoy today's program as we dig deeper into what it means to be still growing in grace. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Still Growing in Grace. And I've got my friend Paul Gray here with me to have a conversation. And uh, as we were discussing, hey, what do we talk about? He said, can we talk about light? And I said, sure, I didn't know you smoked. But anyway, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, that was a topic on one of my messages recently. Got a light? Yeah. So I thought, hey, Paul, uh, first of all, it's been a long time. Uh, I think it's been months and months since we connected. This uh, COVID difficulty is really taking its toll on, on connecting with people. Um, it's changing how we connect with people. Sometimes it's more frequently because of Zoom and other video calls. Um, what's, what's happening in your world? You're in the United States. I'm in Canada, two different worlds, <laughs> both in America though, both in America, <laughs> Paul and I were just talking about somebody was uh, making a comment yesterday about this is America. And I said, uh, and they were in the U United States and I said, no, 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 no. America includes South America, Mexico, United States and Canada. So America is the whole thing. So be careful. If you're talking about just the USA, then talk about just the USA. This is really funny. Little details. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so what do you want to talk about, my friend? Uh oh, you're frozen. Shoot. I am. There we go. Not anymore. Not anymore. Okay. Good. I, I want to talk about light. And uh, I, that's what uh, the Lord has just been impressing on me, if we want to use that old religious term sure. uh, in, in this stage of my life. And uh, it's interesting for me to look back at some things that I had written uh, about and taught about before. I, I uh, uh, used the term light and darkness and things like that, but it, it's just been in this most recent period of my life that uh, uh, God is showing me more and more uh, deeper things of what of what that really means and I you know we won't ever know <clears throat> on this side all the depths probably on the other side either we won't know all the depths of, of uh, all the things about Lord we uh, the Lord we just can't but uh, <clears throat> first John 1 uh, 5 has uh, it's just really been on my mind and uh, it from my understanding, what it, what it seems to be there, what John is saying, and from what I understand from church history is, you know, John was <clears throat> 90 years old at the time. Uh, he, he was uh, uh, maybe the only living person still alive that <clears throat> had been with Jesus, <clears throat> uh, had uh, been involved with him and seen him face to face. He, he had, uh, you know, led the church at Ephesus for a long time. And uh, obviously people knew, hey, you're, you know, this was way older than a lifespan, and they knew this guy ain't going to be around much longer. And mm -hmm. so church history says they came to him and said, you, you know, met it out for us, you know, show us, show us what Jesus was really all about. <clears throat> and in uh, 1 John 1, 5, he says, this is the essence of the message that we heard personally from Jesus in God God is pure light, and in God there is no trace of darkness. Hmm. So he said, this is the essence. If you, you want to know what it's all about, I'm 90 years old, you asked me to net it out, here it is. And of course he goes on and that to, to teach us and show us that God is love and, and all the other things. But he says, the essence is God is light, pure light, and in him is no darkness at all. Well, I've read that before and, and uh, primarily focused on the next few verses back in my uh, <clears throat> overtly religious days. But what the Lord is, <clears throat> is showing me now is you said that, that's 1 John what? 1 uh, John 1, 5. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and read it from whatever uh, uh, you want to use. I, I, was, I was basically using the, the Passion Translation. Oh, there. I love the Passion Translation. Actually, yeah. let me... Let me uh, share my screen here because uh this 
having uh, multiple versions is really fun. Um, the living, New Living Translation says, this is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you, God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. And then the passion, I love what you said there in the passion. Um, Young's literal translation for those who want to go a little more literal is this is the message that we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light and darkness in him is not at all. And on and on we go. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, look, read, read the uh, Passion. Go back and read the Passion. Sure. Um, I, I didn't quote it exactly. Oh, haha. Uh, passion is, this is the life-giving message we heard him share and is still ringing in our ears. We now repeat his words to you. God is pure light. You will never find even a trace of darkness in him. Oh, oh, oh. I love that. Yeah, wow. me too. And... <clears throat> uh, God has just shown me lots of things about that, but <clears throat> primarily uh, going back to the beginning of mankind in the beginning, you know, when, when, if it's Adam and Eve or whatever their names were, whoever they were, uh, we'll, we'll call them Adam and Eve. They walked with, they walked with God. They walked with the father, the son and the Holy spirit. <clears throat> and they were in pure light. Yeah. They, they, they walked uh, in light, you know, the, uh, uh, unfortunately it says, um, uh, Adam and Eve walked with God in the cool of the day. Well, the word God there is Elohim, which is plural. And the phrase in the cool of the day is Ruach, which is always translated spirit everywhere else in the old Testament It's never translated in the cool of the day ever anywhere else. Wow. And, and I think the, uh, what happened with people, writing that studying and everything they, they didn't have any concept of the spirit they didn't have any concept of elohim being father son and holy spirit so what it really says is adam and eve walked with the father and jesus in the holy spirit mm -hmm. it wasn't just in the cool of the day it was all the time every day so i mean you know they were at one with him and, and they have to say a prayer first before they could walk in the light well, they had to ask him to come and be with them. Yeah. And if they didn't get the prayer right, man, they were out of luck Sorry. for that day. <laughs> so at any rate, at any rate, they, um, they, lost, uh, they lost that understanding of God being pure light with no darkness at all. And they came up with, <clears throat> in their own mind, they created a God in their own image who was dark. Who was angry? Who uh, who was punitive? Uh, who didn't want to be around them? Who they had to hide from? Who they had to do, do think, things to get right with? Do you think part of the one of the causes of their decision to eat that fruit, um, shame was a major contributing factor to self harm and see everything else as broken? Oh, certainly. Yeah. After, after, afterwards, yeah, there, there was shame. It, shame didn't come from God. No. No, it, it came from their own minds. Uh, yeah, the, the shame, the condemnation, the sense of separation, um, the guilt, uh, all of that came from missing the mark of seeing that God is pure light <laughs> with no darkness at all. Now, they then... Of course, they believed those lies, and they passed those lies down on to their kids and to everybody else. Then we've all been we've all been taught by parents, friends, society, especially by religion, that God is dark, angry, and uh, not pleased with us. And we have to do we we should be ashamed. We should feel guilty. We're not worthy. And we have to do things to somehow try to get right and stay right with him. So everybody, after Adam and Eve went down that dark rabbit hole, everybody after that thought, believed that God was dark. God had a dark side <clears throat> to it. And when Jesus came along, as we know, he came to reveal the only true father to us, to show us uh, who God really was. He demonstrated that <clears throat> in his own life and by his teaching. But he said in Matthew eleven twenty seven, he says, not a single one of you knows the father or me. And I believe the implication was there that no person ever since 
before Adam and Eve went down that uh, uh, dark mindset. Nobody ever fully knew who God was, and they believed the lie that God was dark, that God had a dark side. Yes, he could be good if they performed correctly. And so Jesus came to reveal to us that that wasn't true. And it's really interesting, Mike. Another thing that the Lord's been showing me a lot, uh, I I got a lot of this from Malcolm Smith. Uh, He's a great teacher. Oh, man, he is. Great guy. Um, But uh, Malcolm taught me that uh, almost every time the Apostle Paul refers to God, uh, he'll refer to the Father as the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, that was not to show that Jesus was the Son of God. He, he used that term to, to show us that the Father he was talking about was the Father that Jesus revealed, mm. not the God that everybody had thought was God before. The Father, the, our, our God the father of the Lord Jesus Christ, totally separate picture of God. And so then when, when John comes along and nets that all out in the passion, it says, this is the essence. Uh, I don't know if the passion said that it might be the mirror that said the essence, but this is the life giving message that we heard from him. And is still ringing in our hearts that God is light with, You're, uh, you've gone quiet there. You may have to repeat that. Give me one second until you come back online. Something's going funny with the internet. It's uh, low. Are you back? I'm here. Okay, try it. Say that again, that last phrase okay. that was lost. Okay, so the Lord has been showing me that if God is pure light with no trace of darkness, then let's, let's look at that in every possible way that we can. Let's look at that with love with agape love. God is pure light with no trace of darkness. So there's no trace of any darkness in God's love. Meaning to me, there's no, there's no dark side of it. There are no conditions there. Now we, we know these things we've been teaching those, but it just helped me help me see that better. You know, there are no time limits. They can't be, there can't be any dark. If God is pure light with no trace of darkness, there can't be any darkness at all to go along with that. Let me, uh, let me see if I can boost my um, uh, Wi-Fi power here to keep this from, uh, keep me from freezing up. I'm supposed to have a way to do this. Uh, it may knock everybody else in the house off. Ah. <laughs> oh, because there might be other people using it in your home. Yeah, uh, yeah. My my grandson is, is home. My wife is helping him with. His oh, as soon as you said grandson, learning. there you go. That means uh, <laughs> well, he, high bandwidth. He, yeah, but he, but he's doing the online school thing. So yeah, that's hard. I I got a I got a thing that um, allows me to boost any particular device. I'm not that's cool. Sure. Yeah, I'm not sure it will let me do it here. Um, but uh, we'll see if, if it does. Hopefully, if, if it does, that will keep me from freezing up. Um, so far, it's not letting that show up. But um, <clears throat> so at any rate, uh, I've been doing that with um, just meditating on every possible thing that I can think about with God. Grace, compassion, mercy, you know, joy, uh, peace, all the different things. If God is pure light, pure light with no trace of darkness, then what does that, what does that mean? I mean, it's, it's becoming very simple to me. It totally eliminates the um, thinking of, well, yeah, but, or, well, yeah, but what about where the Bible says this or that? Uh, if it says, or if we hear a, a, a teacher, even a well, well-known, acclaimed teacher such as yourself, say something that indicates that there's some darkness in God, <laughs> then we know that's not right. <clears throat> we, 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 can, 
we can but, set again, that aside. But yeah. this, this, I think I know where you're going with some of this. There are individuals who haven't even been told there's another perspective on light. They've been told through the system of religion and church, this is what God is like. And that's it. And there's no arguing about it. That includes the interpretations of the Old Testament all the way through until they arrive at Christ. Yeah. So <laughs> unpacking this is really helpful. Like this, well, it, we, no, most people don't know what this darkness light means. Exactly. And, and one of the things, one of the foundational things that it's uh, uh, helped me see, I, I was seeing this before, is <clears throat> uh, coming to grips with... Um, Scripture is not the fourth person of the Trinity. <laughs> Scripture is not to be worshipped. Scripture is not inerrant. Uh, I, I like I like what uh, uh, Brad Jerzak said. He goes, the, I believe the Word of God is completely inerrant. Uh, and when he was 18, he grew a beard. Right. <laughs> exactly. And so any time... That, that's really helped me. I mean, all of these things have, but the, the light and darkness thing has really helped me in looking at what I call troubling scripture. Mm. <clears throat> if, if there's any hint of God being dark, having a dark side, then something is wrong there. Mm. Either, either the people who wrote it didn't... Uh, didn't have the full picture of God, which of course nobody until Jesus came did, and and none of us do now. But so <clears throat> any of us, I mean, you and I, I, I write and say things today that I know I'm convinced are are true about God that I didn't know, you know, a year ago or five years ago or 10 years ago or whatever. So, you know, to think that the people who wrote the Bible had it all figured out and were exactly right uh, is ludicrous <laughs> it's incomplete. So, yeah I so call, when, I, yeah yeah so when 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 we see things um you i could pull up any number of passages but when we see things rather than like i used to in my evangelical days rather than try to justify that and make sense of that and go to the old fallback thing well god's ways are higher than ours i mean we can't <laughs> Yeah, the biggest it, cop out. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I'm now able just to say, no, that that can't be true. Either the people who wrote it didn't um, didn't understand God fully, or it's a mistranslation, mm -hmm. or there's something yet that I don't understand. Yeah. But I'm not gonna. I'm not willing to go down the path that God is like that. Yep. Because he's not. I think so, I've, I've understood it to be that the, those who wrote the Old Testament scriptures wrote it from their truth. Oh, they, sure. They wrote down what was true to them. Yes. And it was all incomplete. None of them got it right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love uh, how um, Francois Dutoit uh, translates, well, all of his stuff, but... Uh, uh, Hebrews 1, you know, he, he says, in those days, we just got glimpses and pieces of uh, fragments of what God was like. But now God reveals himself fully through Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, uh, looking at Jesus' life goes along with the whole picture of light and darkness. When we look at his life, <clears throat> you know, there, there, was, there was no darkness. Uh, we don't find him condemning uh, uh, people. We, we, we find him uh, correcting people or calling people out, but only when they were portraying God as mm. having a dark side. He, he, didn't, he didn't call out people for drinking too much or for being a prostitute or for doing, uh, you know, any of these other things. You know, when he said to the, the woman caught in adultery, when he said, uh, go and sin no more, as we know, the word sin, harmartia, means falling short, missing the mark. And I believe he was saying, go on now and don't miss the mark of understanding how good God is, who God is, who he made you to be, mm. uh, what life uh, with him uh, is like. You know, don't, don't go into that trap anymore because it hurts you. And, and look at, you know, it can get you When in you believe like a lie, that. you live out a lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, this, this may be something that you, Mike, or our listeners or anybody else is going, 
Well, duh, of course, yeah, we always knew all of this. For me, it's just coming into a, a clearer, a brighter picture. Uh, uh, you know, it goes on to say in First John 1, 7, if we walk in the light as he is in the light. Well, I, to me, walking in the light <laughs> is walking in the light of knowing there's no darkness in God. There's no darkness. And God. Ha- there's no darkness in God as God relates to me and you and everybody else there's no there's no well god is good and loving and and great and wonderful for us (laughs) but not for them no there's no darkness at all in god for anybody well that changes how we look at things doesn't it well we need a perspective change especially in the environment we're in right now you know like there's so much i think uh, stormy just commented that there's lots of talk of doom and gloom today well there isn't doom and gloom in the light of god there's only hope there's inspiration there's encouragement yeah 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 what what are we looking for well we we will find what it is we're looking for that's for sure we we will and uh, you know that reminds me of uh hebrews 10 24 uh, the way i memorized it was uh, uh do not forsake meeting together with one another, uh, but encourage one another and all the more as you see the day of the Lord coming, something like that. Well, that has nothing to do with uh, going to church and uh, not missing church. It has everything to do with when we're together, encouraging one another of who God is, who we are, who they are, especially encouraging one another as to who they really are, how God feels about them, and everybody else has and nothing by the way, to do and, with attendance. And this is together, you and me, right now. We're doing it. Yeah. This is church. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it is. It's not it the is. building. This is, this is encouraging not only each other, but maybe someone who's watching at some point will be encouraged by what they hear. Because I think you're, you're really bringing out a, a really important topic. Because if people have a faulty concept, first of all, of who God is, and have a false concept of darkness, um, that is going to skew their faith and their ability to believe. So the more that gets removed or the more that gets um, cleaned out of their filter, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. better, right? Exactly. And I'm, I still get stuff getting cleaned up. So this is a good oh, topic. Me too, sure. So, so the question, one of the many questions that I'm asking today is, where is that darkness? Mm-hmm. It's only one place. Yeah. It's in our minds. Yep. And it's, it's a false mindset uh, of believing in Adam's dark, angry, religious, small G concept of God. That's, that's where it all is. Mm-hmm. And we don't, we don't have to go there. We don't have to take those thoughts. Now, our, our, especially those of us who have been uh, ingrained in, in religion and in church, and it, I know that you're the same way, Mike. I, I, I'm not bashing the churches that I grew up in or the denominations that I, that I was part of. All of those, were, all of those had uh, wonderful people in them. There, were, there was great fellowship. We did good things. We helped people. Um, but it, we were like seeing in, in a glass dimly, I, I believe. Mm-hmm. And, the, you know, they were part of our journey to get us to where we are now. It's not that we're better or anything else than anybody who are still uh, stuck in those places. We're, we're starting to um, filter out those dark concepts that we were taught by people who were taught by people who were taught that God is a God has a dark side to him. Yeah, yeah, boy, I like I like Jesus. You know, he's a good guy. But you know, Jesus, be be my uh, be my intercessor. Protect me from that dark God. I mean, remind him of yep. what you did, Jesus, because he he's forgetful. Well, he's liable to punish me. So you remind him. <laughs> well, people think Jesus is the good cop and God the Father is the bad cop. Right. And <laughs> and what John what John said is there ain't no bad cop in the whole deal. It's, yep. <laughs> there's, can, there's I, no. can I read a scripture to you from Second Corinthians 4? Sure. Let me pop this up on the screen because this is this this will fit. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing in though in whose case the small g God 
of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving so they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus as Lord. Here comes the best part. And ourselves as bond servants for Jesus' sake, for God who said, for God who said, light shall shine out of darkness, is the one who has shone in the hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Wow. This is a powerful, powerful yeah. reminder that even if yeah. you have to play with the words darkness, because the scriptures use the word darkness <laughs> often. Yeah. But it doesn't mean legitimate, actual darkness. It's subjective, not objective. Exactly. And I saw, I love this light shining out. I think, in, is it in First John? Or is it in, I think it's First John, where he, he speaks of the light shall shine out of the darkness. Maybe this, forget where it is. I have to remember. But uh, that, this but, whole idea of the light still shines yeah. out, even yeah, though we're in darkness. Sure. Isaiah predicted that. The light will, uh, the people who are in darkness uh, will see the light that comes shining out of the darkness. And in John chapter one, Jesus is the light, uh, you know, who, who, uh, who um, shines in everyone. It's, it's fascinating for me to study uh, what the apostle Paul talked about back when he was Saul, you know, and he, he was going to Damascus uh, ready to uh, do his number on the, the Christians again. And the great light, shown uh some uh, versions say shown around me and all of my friends but then he goes on to say is when he writes to the church in galatia chapter 1 15 and 16 he said it pleased the lord to reveal christ in me so that great light that he saw was in him in in him and as again as francois translates it in the mirror and he said, God revealed Christ in me. Not to me. Yeah. And sent me to reveal Christ in the Gentiles. Wow. Not to the Gentiles. It's the same, very same Greek word, en. Wow. It's been translated differently just a few words later, which goes against all principles of, of translation. But, um, <laughs> but that light, as Paul said, now here, here was Paul who... Uh, Boy, he was the champion of having the the picture, the mindset of a dark god. I mean, he was the Pharisee of Pharisees. Yep. And he he had the fully developed picture of a dark god and was acting out on that. He thought Jesus was a fake, uh, and and I'm I'm confident that God. Uh, <laughs> it's funny to say it knew what he was doing <laughs> you think because he you know he picked somebody who had the the most fully developed picture of a dark concept of god that you could and then revealed himself to him inside of him in pure light mm -hmm. and contrasted that light and darkness and uh, you know saul said okay what do you want me to do Lord, I mean, <laughs> I, I, everything I've been doing apparently was wrong. So what do you want me to do? That's scary. Well, let me read you a verse yeah. from Matthew 6, because this will confirm what you were just talking about. It says, the eye is the lamp of the body. So then if your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. Isn't that nice? But yeah. if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. And here it is. If then the light that is in you if that light is darkness oh my goodness how great is that darkness it, the, the yeah. truth is the light's there it yeah. is in you it shines through yeah. darkness so yeah i think that's it that's where i was talking about in first john uh he's speaking about mm -hmm. the light shines through darkness so yeah. i believe the light of christ shines through all of creation it is present in everything in every human the light of christ is there it's yeah. it, it's present it's there's no place god isn't and so yeah. the waking up is the unveiling yeah. taking the darkness off the covers of your glasses and realize oh my goodness i've had dark sunglasses on the whole time <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Boy, that's exactly right. And I don't have these quotes in front of me, but, I, but I'll summarize them. I, I taught on it recently. Both um, uh, C.S. Lewis and Billy Graham 
uh, I, I have, have quotes from them. You can find them. Uh, you can Google it. Both of them talked about uh, people who have never seen a Bible or heard a Bible or heard the name of Jesus. Both of, they both said, I be, they believe that people respond to the light within them. Yep. And both said, I believe they are all included in God's love and we will all be together one day. Now that's a quote that the Billy Graham Association yep. disavows now, yep. but it's, it was on TV. I mean, he, he said it with Robert Schuller and, uh, but everything else he said was fine. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Except for that one thing about light. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's so easy to judge and, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, uh, it, it, it would be the height of arrogance to me to think that God, uh, uh, chooses to reveal his light to me because of uh, some good thing that I've done or because I had to happen to be lucky enough to uh, be born in a country where people, uh, uh, you know, had a copy of the Bible or whatever. <clears throat> no, it, God is uh, uh, God's light and love and grace and peace and joy and everything else is already in everyone. And the Holy Spirit is all about revealing that mm -hmm. to people everywhere. And we get to see it and participate in it now because of, of the internet, uh, because of social media. We get to see it happening mm. in people's lives all over the world, which we didn't before. I, you've heard me say before, and I, I think you had a similar situation. When I started seeing on this journey and started seeing grace, I, I thought I was the only one. I, I, I didn't know there was anybody else. And of course I thought, am, am I crazy? You know, am, uh, well, <clears throat> yeah, maybe, maybe I am crazy, <laughs> but I wasn't the only one. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I've so, had more fun connecting with individuals who God revealed good news to them apart from any teacher. Like I've been exposed to teachers my whole life, good teachers, good mentors. And it's been great. And yeah. I, I've learned some powerful things, but once I've learned them, it, I didn't just believe it because my teacher taught me. I had, to, sometimes it didn't sit right and I had to really wrestle with it and study through. Um, sometimes you get accused of being a, um, uh, just a follower of a certain teacher. Well, mm -hmm. that's tough because I've got buddies of mine who have learned this revelation without anybody teaching them. They've done some hardcore study and God showed them stuff. I, to me, it excites me to know it's not just about any denomination, any faith group, any ministry, nothing like that. But we're still all one. And we're all teaching. We're all learning each, from each other too, right? The, yeah. Nobody's got it all. So stay yeah. humble and teachable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's exactly true. And you used the word filter, I think, when we started out mm -hmm. with. And, and we've been... Uh, uh, we've been learning for several years now to filter everything through the lens of Christ, uh, you know, a more Christ-like God, you know, if it, if it doesn't fit, yeah, if it doesn't fit with, uh, um, with Christ or through the Christocentric lens, then, you know, it, it's not, uh, we know that it's not true. Well, that, this whole concept of light just really, uh, uh, encompasses that, you know, uh, uh, if it doesn't fit with in the lens of Christ, who is God, who is light, who is pure light with no darkness, then I'm not. Gonna, I'm no longer going to go down that path. I'm, I'm not even interested in arguing with people. Or um, you know, when people say, "Well, what you know, what what about where the Bible says this?" I I you know, I'm not a, a super scholar. I'm not. A, I'm not a Greek or uh, Hebrew trained guy, but. I've studied enough and I know enough to, to be able to refute those things and show what the original words meant or things that have been translated wrong or all that kind of stuff. But I don't want to spend my time doing that anymore. Mm -hmm. I just want to spend my time focusing. You know, so when, when, when somebody says to me anymore, well, what about, the, what about this verse or what about that verse? Hopefully I respond gently <laughs> as opposed to what we were talking about we saw last night. <clears throat> Hopefully I respond gently and in love, and I'm, I'm learning to say, my understanding of the God that I know personally is that he is pure light 
and pure love and there's no darkness at all. Mm. So that verse that you're talking about, the understanding that I used to have of that doesn't fit. Yep. I've, so I'm not going to spend my time going back. I can do that, yep. but it only drags me down when I do. I'm not going to spend my time going back and talking about the, the Greek and the Hebrew. and the. Well, uh, do you know what we do when we do that? We rob people of the experience. We rob people of the journey. People want to hijack our journeys yeah. and do shortcuts. They want yeah. a shortcut vending machine answer for some of these tough questions. That's why they love yeah. these, these books that are written, you know, uh, of uh, here's some of the 100 and, 120 uh, lies that uh, um, uh, whatever. You, just, you pick whatever sure. it is you've got, right? Oh, sure. And they're, yeah. they're helpful. I like those books. Yeah. But – when it comes to questions of what about, what about, what about, um, that's a personal journey. What I've done now is I've invited people to say, hey, I can't, I'm not going to argue with you on this one because we see things from a different perspective. Yeah. And I'd, I'd invite you into my journey. I'll expose you to what helped me come to the conclusion I'm at now. If yeah. you don't want any part of that, we're not going to continue the conversation. It's just that simple. Yeah. I haven't got time for that. Yeah, me either. That's where I am. And that, that ties in again, too, with uh, walking in the light, uh, pure light uh, walkers, as, as I'm starting to call it. Um, I see that sign behind you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 I, what I'm really wanting to do and be about, <clears throat> my, my greatest takeaway so far from walking in the light is hearing from God yourself. Mm. It's not hearing what Paul Gray or Mike Sinker or Brad Jerzak or anybody else has to, those are all helpful. Sure. Hopefully I'm helpful. I know you are and Brad are those, those are all helpful. We can, we can learn from those things. We can go, Oh yeah. Yeah. I see that. Or I can relate to this or whatever. But the Lord has just shown me, Paul, how arrogant would it be for you to think that I have called you to try to get everybody to believe like you do. What I've called you to do is to help people hear from me themselves. And I'm quite capable of communicating to them who I am. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you can take what I've taught you and you can help people say, well, okay, how, how do you know you're hearing from God? which is a legitimate question that I get a lot. Here's how I know if it's pure light and no mm -hmm. darkness, I'm confident that's from God. Mm -hmm. If I'm hearing something that shows that there's any darkness in God uh, or how God feels about me or you or anybody else, I'm confident I'm not hearing from God. Mm -hmm. So what I encourage you to do is to be still Listen, just say to the Holy Spirit, hey, show me, show me. That. Now, we've we got to be willing to, to set aside, as um, a lot of us have been doing, we've, we've got to be willing to set aside everything that we've been taught and it's ingrained in us. What? But, no. Yeah, because, I mean, if we're, if we're dead set that God hates gays and there's no chance for them and they can't be in ministry and they're all going to burn in hell anyway— and then if we get quiet and listen to God and say, well, God, tell me, what, 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 how, do you feel about, how do you feel about gays? We're not going to hear from him yeah. if, we're, if we're dead set on what we've been taught about things. Yeah. I mean, and our opinion has to shed light. If it's not light that's being sent out, it's not a holy opinion. Yeah, yeah. Well, give me, give me one second. I want to show you something really cool in light of that topic. Hang on. Okay. I see uh, Becky wrote something just now, Becky McKay. She says, revelation is so much better than information demanded. You know, great quote from that. It's true. You know, yeah. people are wanting more and more information, but they can't even handle the revelation they got. So here's, here's a picture of a shirt I got from the naked pastor, David Hayward. Mm -hmm. It's called Ally. It's, it's basically saying I'm an ally to those that are, that are in the world of LGBTQ. Oh, I, I see now. I see the rainbow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's, yeah. Sorry. It may be hard to yeah. see for you and your thingy. Yeah. Um, but this, this topic, 
uh, has come up a lot lately. And uh, my understanding has been greatly expanded. And my love for the LGBTQ community is growing rapidly. Um, because well. yeah. this is what Jesus, Jesus loves. And if we start to create other separations in the body of Christ, oh my mm-hmm. goodness, what are we doing? And that's what the church has done with the LGBTQ community is create another division. So that's them, they're different. Yeah. You know, or those are the divorced people or all these labels yeah. that do not reflect oneness. Yeah. And do not express light. So, yeah. oh my goodness. I hope we get to talk about that topic yeah. sometime some more. Well, and the, and the watching world, Mike, as you well know, see the way the church has treated and judged and uh, uh, demeaned uh, that community and others and go, no, nah, uh, I don't want to have anything to do with the God who's like that. Yep. So it's, it's not, as we were taught in church, people don't reject the only true God who is pure light. They reject Adam's dark, religious, angry concept of God, yep. and they should. Yep. That's where <laughs> atheism comes in as a gift, not a curse. Yeah, yeah I'm an atheist of that God, too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's not original with me. I mean, we both heard Paul Young and others say that. I know. I remember the stool <laughs> illustration, <the> stool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Were you there at the conference in uh, Atlanta? No, I, I okay. wasn't. I, I did get a copy of the bootleg copy of all the videos of that and watched them over and over again. Gee, I, I wonder I was, where you got those from. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> it might have had something to do with you. But I, I was... Uh, I, I, I was scheduled to go. Some other folks from our group here did. And then uh, my daughter-in-law's mom died the day before we were going to leave. And I needed to be here with them. And they wanted me to do the funeral. And uh, um, it, it, it was a very interesting um, uh, funeral because, uh, you know, without, you know, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to reveal too much here, but uh, the, the woman who died had had uh, uh, a different um, a different lifestyle than the rest of her family. The rest of her family was extremely religious and they, uh, uh, they had, uh, now this woman came to see the light came to see the truth in her later years, but the rest of the family had, had written her off. Yeah. And, uh, so I got to do the funeral. Wow. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, so it was worth it not to go. And, uh, thankfully I, I got those videos and yeah. Mm. So I have a, a quote here from T.F. Torrance. Have you used his quote on light before? What is it? I'm going to share it with you. I'm glad you asked. Cool. <laughs> here it is. The constancy of physical light is a reflection of the constancy of God, his nature, and the way he relates to his creation. Just like physical light, God in his pure love is always moving towards you in total purity and goodness of intention to embrace you intimately and personally. He does this regardless of your direction of travel or your attitude towards him or your moral performance. God's love is as constant, unerring, and warming as the rays of the sun. There is no shadow or turning and all of God's nature and character, including his wrath and judgment must be understood from the basis of the primary truth that he is love and he is light. His wrath and anger is only ever directed towards those things that harm his beloved children and his creation, not towards his children or his creation themselves. His light i.e. himself, shines on all, constantly and unceasingly, regardless of their attitude towards him, God's very being radiates constant, unchanging, unrelenting, pure love and warmth. T.F. Torrance. Wow. Will you send me that? Oh, yeah. Isn't that good? Yes. (laughs) My goodness. Oh, well, this has been worth it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, <laughs> because of that, and but everything not else just, too. It's not one person saying this. This yeah. is a choir that is getting larger. Yeah. The orchestra is chiming in. We're finding new instruments that are singing the tune of this love and light, and it's yeah. spreading faster, and it's drowning out all the religious crap. It really is. 
You know, yeah. I, I've, bump, I've been bumping into some folks or they've been commenting on my posts from my old background and I'm trying to be gentle and gracious or just delete. If it's a, if the comment is, <laughs> is a, um, a fight causing one, I'll delete the comment. Yeah. But if it's a honest question or worth, you know, having some discussion, but if it's going to turn into yeah. a fight, I'm not doing that on my posts, Yeah. but they're, they're only speaking from their own darkness. Yeah. Their perceived darkness. They just yeah. haven't seen. Mm-hmm. And I thought it's been 30 or 40 years and you still have not changed one bit of your theology. Holy smoke. Something's wrong. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I have a, a dear friend who um, helped start our church with me over 30 years ago. <clears throat> and, uh, 15, 20 years before that, he'd been involved in a wonderful, exciting uh, campus ministry. Uh, but by the time our church came around, he, he, he told me himself, he said, he said, Paul, I'm, I'm living on 20-year-old spirituality. You know, I, I haven't heard anything new or haven't really grown, you know, in 20 years. Uh, wow. And, you know, and I, and I felt for him. Um, I, you know, I, I didn't exactly know how to counsel him. Um, You just uh, copped out there. Give it a second till you come back. So Paul, Paul Gray's internet is uh, having difficulty at this time, but uh, he'll, he'll bounce back in just a second. Hopefully quickly, because he's got a story to tell. All right. You back yet, Paul? If you can hear me, we cannot hear you. You're frozen. Not there. All right. We'll give him a second. If he doesn't come back in, in like 10 seconds, I'm going to jump to a scripture I want to share um, because uh, I, think, I think you're going to, going to like this. I hope Paul's back short. Oh, he's texting me. Oh, oh, computer died. He's gone. All right, Paul. Uh, so sorry about that. We just lost Paul. We're going to have to do this again, but let me, let me wrap things up then. Uh, it was a good conversation. We're going to continue. We're going to do part two. Hopefully he'll agree to that. I think he will. Um, so here, let's end with this. This is, this is one of my favorite verses on, on light since this has been the topic. So let's, let's take a look at um, John 1. This is powerful. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Capital W, folks. Capital W for Word, not Bible. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. They're talking about John the Baptist here. There was the true light, which coming into the world, Jesus, enlightens every man. He was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. Right there. Like we're going to come back to this verse. I think we're going to, we're going to have to have a conversation about this particular text. I think Paul Gray will have some wonderful things to say about it. But I tell you, Paul, thank you for joining. I'm sorry you got bumped off and hopefully you'll see the last couple of minutes of this. Uh, thank you for those who've been commenting. Nisa, hello. Becky, great to see you there. Stormy. Um, we've got hello from uh, um, Howard from BC. Thank you for chiming in. It's, it's good to have you guys watching. Chime in if you're watching this afterwards. Make some comments. Let us know you watched. And uh, we're going to talk some more about light. This, this is a really important topic. And uh, I think, honestly, in my world, when we study what light is, what Paul, is, Paul Gray is uh, getting at, um, this topic, if we visit this, this could become the bridge to see how Christ is in all and through all because of the light. I think that is a great um, gateway into helping you understand that. All right. Thank you so much for watching Still Growing Grace. 
We try to have something every single Wednesday for you. Um, if this is your first time watching, please go online to the uh, um, YouTube channel for Michael Zenker, Z-E-N-K-E-R, and uh, take a look at the other recordings there. I have my Sunday morning fel uh, Hope Fellowship um, recordings there. Great series to listen to. In fact, somebody, Stormy, you were talking about uh, all this negativity. Oh, hey, Paul's come back in. Um, you were talking about all this negativity that's coming in, uh, in our news. Um, and there's a series I just finished up on and I, I dealt with some end time stuff and I think you might be encouraged by that. So, uh, uh definitely stormy, go and take a look uh, the series is called, um, what's it called again? Uh, stop the world. I want to get off. So go back and watch that. You will find some encouragement. That whole series is designed to have a better mindset during this COVID time. Hey, Paul, welcome back. Thanks. My computer just died and it's, it's flickering right now. So um, it may die again, uh, but I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. I, I just finished reading uh, John chapter one, um, where it says in the beginning was the word. And I thought, hey, let's, let's do this again. Let's do a part two of God is like, I think there's a lot more to talk about. Let's do. I'd love right. to. Okay. Well, if, if we pull it off next week, let's, uh, I'll talk to you offline about that to confirm. Sure. Um, but I think this is a big one. And I explained why I think it's a big I, I was saying to everyone else before you, while well, you're offline, <laughs> that this idea of God is light may be the best gateway for us to see the inclusion of all humanity. Okay. Mm -hmm. That Christ is in all mm -hmm. because of just light. It's easier to understand yeah. light shining through. Well, if that's true, what if God is the light? Oh, shoot. He really is in everything and everyone. Like, it's just a, some people have yeah. a hard time with that terminology. I think this is a oh, great yeah. bridge builder. Good. Me too. <laughs> well, hopefully we can do it again next week or at least soon. All right. I'm going to, you don't, don't leave yet. I'm going to turn off okay. the streaming, but uh, uh, thank you everyone for joining us on Still Growing in Grace. Uh, see you next week. It's been a, an absolute pleasure. pleasure. <laughs> um, have a good one. Thanks. Join me next time on Still Growing in Grace for more good news. Enjoy previous episodes by downloading our podcast at growingingrace.ca. You can also visit hopefellowshipycc.com to find our service times and location. If this show has been an encouragement to you, please consider making a donation today at growingingrace.ca and help us keep spreading this good news. Thank you again for tuning in to Still Growing in Grace.